So to me, like, if you, like, when, when I hear that somebody wants to be the next Puff Daddy, or the next me, or the next whatever anybody wants to be, whatever, whatever you want to be, at, a, at whatever level, right? I genuinely believe that you should spend all your time to try to go get an internship to be as close to that person as, if anybody here actually wanted to be the next me, I think that they should have tried to be the intern on my team versus an intern at VaynerMedia, I believe that. I genuinely believe the closer you can get to the sun of what you want to be, the more likely you'll learn. So my question is like, how do you do that? By relentless fucking pursuit. So if that, like, even if your email says don't talk to me for Especially. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that. It's just the audacity to find the right balance. It's really actually interesting. It's not super different than David's question in some ways. How do you find the right cadence and balance to be aggressive without being fucking annoying? There's people that try to reach me every day, lots of them. Some of them immediately through their first three attempts go into I will never fucking interact with this person ever because it's coming from a bad place. Like I get to be the judge and the jury of that's what it tastes like and other people win and eventually get their at-bats. There's, pe- there's a kid I met today for five minutes, like some of these people tried for 15 times to get like, it's, if, to me it's like if you want it so bad, first of all, there may be 34 people that look like you wanna be, right? So, you know, there may be 11 hip hop business mogul people and you can go right down the line and try to hit up, you know, Birdman and P. Diddy, you know, 50 times each, right? So. I think it's worth it, Mal, honestly. Like, I think it's worth it. You have to understand, the upside's greater than the downside. Like, to me. How do you make yourself? How do you make yourself stand out? But, like, how do you stand out to the point? You need to understand that person. So, you fucking really try to figure out who they are. One of the things I would do is follow them heavily on social and figure out what, the, like, there's a lot of ways to break through. Like, for example, everybody thinks the best way to get a hold of me is to write in the email subject, I'm, I've got, I'm gonna help you buy the New York Jets. I've got an idea that's gonna help you buy the Jets. I'm gonna help you buy the Jets. The problem is that's what everybody does, which means that none of them get through. The answer is I don't know because everybody's got a different unlock. Here's what I do know about Ron Howard and all these different fancy people I know. All of them have been penetrated, all of them. Because winners wanna give other winners at bats. We feel guilt and we have to pay back to the thing that put us there. And they all do it. And so to me, I think you know, it's fucking cool to try to like pull that off. And I actually think it's just, especially when I think about it from a college, still in college, internship level, I think it's like a fun journey. I actually think it's a cool content series to start in September and spend all of September through like March trying to become an intern on team XYZ. You know, for all of you that are going to South by Southwest, my one tip is to uh, just say hello, right? The conferences are about networking. The content you can watch the next day uh, or follow the Twitter stream, right? Um, but saying hello and, and sparking up a relationship is something that's not re- replicatable. Genuinely may be the only time you ever get to do it. So whether it's somebody you admire, or uh, you're just standing in line and you don't know the person, you never know if that person is the key to your, to your uh, next step. I think a lot of people think information is the unlock to uh, the next chapters of their career, but I find that it's the people that are often the actual unlock, and so uh, a really easy tactic, say hello, uh, be, be warm and kind and, and, and network. I know some people have anxiety with that or this and that. Um, I'm empathetic to that, but I would highly recommend trying to break it. If you're going to a conference like South By, the networking is the ROI. When I grow up, I want to be a clothing designer, kind of like Virgil and like Sean Withers. Yes. And I was wondering, what would be your advice for me to achieve? Go intern for Virgil or Sean. Your whole life right now should be about getting internships from people that you want to be like. Because the closer you get to the sun, the more likely you could become it. Your whole life for the next eight years should be about interning for the people that you want to become. It's the number one move. You understand? Cool, do that. And you're gonna start with Virgil and Sean and they're not gonna reply to your DM. But you're gonna, let, you're gonna hit up Jerry DiLorenzo, you know, Kun Lorenzo, next, next, babe, next, next. But somebody's gonna say yes. 
and you start at the number 44 person you wanted. And the next summer you get the number 22 because you worked for number 44. Right? Champion wasn't fresh three years ago. Right? Yeah. So, be smart. You understand? You're welcome. Getting, listen to me, getting closest to the sun is where all the leverage is. People don't understand. Look, these two fucking guys are so much further ahead of every, his whole career is already made. How long have you worked for me? Two years. He, if he wants to work for Steven Spielberg, it's set. Like, people don't get it. Get as close to the, people are gonna pay me $200,000 a year to work for me in five years. That's what's gonna happen when people understand. Right now, the biggest steal of all time is to fucking get Mark Cuban's coffee, to get P. Diddy's shoes cleaned. Once you get into the vortex, if you're smart, I can tell you're smart. If you suck, then people get in and then they get out. But if you're good and you can get closest to the sun, it's over. As how do you meet relevant people at South by Southwest? You know, Alexander, I think the first opening move is to get out of the mentality of douchery that justifies and categorizes people that, did he say relevant? I believe so. Did he, did he, I, I wanna make sure I'm using the right word. It was relevant. Al, Alex, honestly, that, I don't know, like, if I could execute what was happening in my stomach right now when I hear people categorize other human beings as relevant, it makes me wanna vomit on myself. Um, <laughs> but I don't think you're a bad guy, Alexander. I, I, I think, I think you're asking a, a proper question. I would say, first of all, relevancy is massively subjective, right? Like there's people that have a lot of followers that have influence, that are VCs, that are whatever you're looking for. I would tell you, I promise you that if, it, again, I think you're seeing a theme in my talk, guys. I'm a very big fan of the second chess move in life. If you're just trying to get to this person, Everybody's trying to get to this relevant fucking person. And so what happens is it becomes a supply and demand issue where you're getting pounded on, you're not breaking through because they're defending against the supply. But when, Alex, when you open yourself up to meeting somebody who might not be a relevant person by your definition, there are a shitload of people running around at South by Southwest that if you have a drink with and say hello are the exact person that's the gateway to 30 minutes of my time at South by Southwest. But on paper with their 306 Twitter followers, it's not gonna seem so obvious. I promise when you stop strategizing people's fucking clout and you start acting like a human being, you will win. I used to come to events like this and nobody knew who the hell I was and I was in the wine business and it made no sense for me to be here. I'm an extrovert. It's comfortable for me to do what I recommend these people, which is if you literally don't know each other, it's probably a good idea to say hello. You've got a common point of view of where the world's going. As many people as there are here, it's still a very tiny percentage of the net score. And so for me, it was comfortable to come to something like this, listen to people and say hello, grab a business card, send an email, try to build a relationship. I'm a big believer in serendipity. I didn't chase the people on stage. I knew equally that the person sitting right next to me in a 13 year macro might be valuable to me. Um, And so my advice to everybody who's not being chased down and cameras and all this, is to say hello to the person next to them because that's how life actually works. Now, there's a lot of people here that are shy. You know, I grew up with parents that had an accent. This is an international show. Like, there's a million things that I can run through my mind from the psychology of why every person here now won't look to the person to the left and right and say hello. It still doesn't make the advice wrong. That is the ROI. The ROI, my friends, everything you've seen here, you could watch on the fucking internet next week. (laughs) The ROI of coming to this thing is to engage with the people next to you right this second. There's nothing I'm gonna say right now that you haven't heard me say in some other version for the last fucking decade. The number one thing that I think you should consider is to work for free. It's the number one thing that I think people with no leverage need to do a lot more and a lot of people give you advice of not doing stuff for free because you need to know your worth but to me the market decides your worth and if nobody knows who you are and nobody cares to work with you I did an enormous amount of free work for Pepsi, for Gillette that's what built the foundation of VaynerMedia so my number one advice for you is to do free work and use that success to leverage so more companies but for free? For free Okay. I mean, you should ask to get paid, but if you get 8,000, I love when people get 8,000 no's, 
and then aren't willing to work for free. The market told you. Like people are like, yo, but my, my service is worth something. No, it's not. <laughs> Until people consistently pay for that service at that price, it's not worth, what, because you and your mom decided? <laughs> free. Do you also recommend getting testimonials from them at least? What's that? Testimonials? Of course, but the results, you'll always get testimonials if you actually execute. Interns, it's not about what you're going to learn this summer, my friends. It's going to be a who you meet. Please understand as you go into this internship, maximize networking. Shake hands, kiss babies. If you're a wallflower, don't even do internships. Like, like not the classic way. Like, like obviously you have a skill to learn. You're lucky enough to be a developer or something like that, but fine. But like, if you're an intern, please understand, it is the human connections that you're gonna make. Way too many people roll in and think they're gonna learn something about advertising or marketing or media or startups. You're not, you're just not. You're, you're not, just saving you time. And if you do, it's just this much. It's 3% of the equation. Please attack the other 97. Go to every after hours event. Say hello to everybody. If you go into an office where everybody's head down and it's not that kind of culture, figure it out, hack it. Be the obnoxious intern that was too bubbly. And make sure you attach yourself. Even if you go into an office, law firm, where everybody's head down, if you see that one person that looks up and gives you a glimmer of people skills, attach yourself to that person. Let them bring you to things. Interns, use this time wisely. Way too many of you go in and you think you're gonna get something and in reality, the magic was sitting right in front of you. And the punchline, my friends, is it's the people. It's the people. It's the people that you meet in that office that go work somewhere else, that are reminded by your hustle and tenacity and good naturedness and, and offense, and you went for it, you attached for it, you wanted it, and, uh, and they're the ones that give you the opportunities. This is a very simple world. This is a people world. Not the black and white skills you learned this summer in eight weeks. Half of you are gonna get coffee and do dumb shit because they disrespect the youth inappropriately. Um, so please, even if you are in that 50% that's getting dumb shit and coffees and things of that nature, say hello. You drop a coffee off to somebody and they've got a Cardinals pennant and you know something about the Cardinals, say something. Say something about Adam Wainwright. Create relationships. It is the only KPI. It is the only ROI of an internship.